local breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. Right now, another deadly shooting is under investigation in Missouri. This time, it's in the city of St. Louis. Authorities say an officer killed a knife-wielding suspect only miles away from the chaos in Ferguson, where an officer there killed an unarmed black teenager. Now, the St. Louis police chief says the suspect was acting erratically. He says the man walked toward the officers and told them, quote, shoot me now, kill me now. The chief says the officers told the man repeatedly to stop and drop the knife, and when he didn't, officers fired. The chief answered questions about the shooting this afternoon. I think it certainly is reasonable that an officer has an expectation to go home at the end of the night. I think we can all understand what's going on in Ferguson, but I think everybody, every police officer that's out here has a right to defend themselves and the community. Okay, now we want to talk about that shooting in Ferguson. The investigation appears to center on conflicting accounts from witnesses. And the intense violence is continuing as protesters demand answers in the shooting of an unarmed 18-year-old, Michael Brown. Stacey Cohen reports from Ferguson, Missouri. Another night of violence in Ferguson. Peaceful protests quickly unraveled into pockets of violence. Two civilians shot, four officers injured, at least 78 people arrested. The National Guard and local law enforcement deployed tear gas and stun grenades while facing Molotov cocktails and rocks from some protesters. The crowd got agitated and excited again, and once again, it was the criminal element that was within the crowd. Meanwhile, it's a tale of two stories over the incident that led to these disturbances in the first place. Officer Darren Wilson's account comes from a woman who called into a local St. Louis radio show, claiming Michael Brown rushed Officer Wilson in the moments before the shooting after they wrestled for his gun. Darren grabs for his gun, and Michael grabs the gun. At one point, he's got the gun totally turned against his, his hip. A source with detailed knowledge of the investigation says this account matches what Officer Wilson has told investigators. Other witnesses, however, tell a different story. While he was running away from the officer trying to get away, he was getting shot at. Brown's mother told NBC she wants justice for her son. We have to remain focused and we have to remain strong and the violence needs to stop. President Obama is sending Attorney General Eric Holder to Ferguson on Wednesday and a grand jury could hear testimony from witnesses as early as tomorrow. Now more on the situation happening in Ferguson. Take a look at the map behind me. Ferguson is a little bit smaller than Malden. Now here's a timeline of the events. Chaos began in the city where Michael Brown was killed on August 9th. Violent protests began the next day. Police say Brown was trying to take the officer's gun during a confrontation. Brown was shot six times. A pathologist performed an independent autopsy. The results found no gun powder residue on his body meaning the shots were not fired from close range. Now, violent protests have raged almost every night in the city. The governor called in the National Guard yesterday. U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder is expected to be in Ferguson tomorrow to check on the federal investigation into Brown's death. NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams will have the latest in a live report from Ferguson and in St. Louis. Nightly News begins tonight after our 6 o'clock newscast. Back here in the upstate, the floodwaters have receded, but the drainage problem isn't going away. Greenville City leaders confirm they are eyeing the penny sales tax referendum as a way to pay for the necessary improvements. WIF News Force Angela Rodriguez joins us live and local in Cleveland Park tonight with the latest. Angela. Cleveland Park is always one of the first areas to flood, especially here at the McDaniel Bridge. And the Mayor Pro Tem tells us that there isn't any money to make the necessary repairs. Right here was where the where the water came up to. Water under the McDaniel Avenue bridge rose an estimated seven feet during the recent flooding. There is now a major concern about its support system. Cleveland Park was underwater and shut down for days. This bridge is actually number four on the list of bridge repairs. Should voters approve a penny sales tax in November designed to fix roads? If you don't have proper drainage, it creates problems off the road and Greenville County has been fighting that problem for years. Another problem exposed by the recent flooding was the drainage near Haywood Road. Floodwaters killed two people and pushed a minivan down a stormwater drain. This area is not on the list of projects the referendum would cover. Again, this all hinges 
on voters approving a penny sales tax increase in November. Many have taken to the streets to protest against that referendum, so certainly no shortage of controversy. Angela Rodriguez, WYFF News 4 Live tonight in Greenville. Angela, thank you. The South Carolina National Guard has big plans for the old Donaldson Center, but not everyone who lives in that area is happy about it. The Guard plans to conduct helicopter training exercises, and some neighbors worry it'll create too much noise. WYFF News Force Tim Waller is live at Greenville County Square, where the plan is being presented to County Council. Tim. Well, Nigel, what the Guard plans to do is use those big Chinook helicopters to gi carry giant slabs of concrete to airports all over the upstate. And the concern here is conducting those exercises, as well as adding two National Guard battalions to the Army Aviation Support Center there at SC TAC, will kick up the noise level in a great big way. And here are the helicopters they plan to use for the training. Six large Chinook helicopters that are normally used to transport troops and artillery and battlefield situations. And four Lakota helicopters, which are smaller than Chinooks but are also powered by turbine engines. Now, as part of the training, the Chinooks will carry 25,000 pound slabs of concrete at low altitude from SC TAC to airports around the upstate. Ed Paxton, who lives near SC Tech, says that's a lot of noise. In the last 45 days, we've had, a, I guess, a 50% increase in noise from the Donaldson facility uh, from helicopters. Uh, so obviously, they've already got units stationed here. Well, minutes ago, the South Carolina National Guard finished its presentation to a committee of the Greenville County Council. They said everything is going to be okay as far as safety and noise, and they have an environmental assessment study to prove it, they say. In the meantime, the concern level among homeowners uh, is a little bit high uh, still after this meeting. Tim Waller, WYFF News 4, live in Greenville. Tim, thank you. A last minute venue change for a fishing tournament means big bucks on the way to one upstate community. WIF of News Mandy Gaither is live and local tonight in Anderson. So, Mandy, how much money is expected to come in? At least half a million dollars, and that's money that had been going to North Carolina until recently. Instead, organizers of the Fishers of Men tournament changed venues, choosing Portman Marina on Lake Hartwell for their tournament in November. They had been booked at a lake in North Carolina, but that lake was going to be unsafe for voters, they say, because it's set to be drawn down for some repairs by the Department of Transportation. It's short notice, but Jennifer Norman with Visit Anderson says they jumped at the chance to host this tournament. You know, any time that we can get a tournament, especially a, a great tournament like this, they practice for three days and then they fish two days, so the, um, it has a larger impact because they're here for so long. We're, we were happy to take it off their hands and uh, feel sorry for them for their lake being drawn down, but you know, their issue is our gain. Now, the tournament is expected to bring up to 160 anglers, and of course, all of them and their families will be spending money here as well as spectators of the event on hotels, gas, food, and more. The event starts November 11th. Mandy Gaither, WYFF News 4, live in Anderson.